to do is to check whether we have the right comb assigned to, to the serial port. How do we find out that? You come here where it says search, okay? Yeah, then you type in device manager here. Device manager, okay? Yeah, all right. When you see the device manager, just double click there. The whole idea is we want to make sure that we have the right COM port and the right COM port for this one is COM4. If we have COM4 there, then we can now go ahead and check the ESD utility to see whether it has also the COM4. If it has no COM4, we have to set COM4 there as well. As you can see here, yeah, let's check. We have COM4 there, okay? Under ports, there is COM4 which, you are, which is being reflected here. So which means that this thing is properly set so we can exit the across there. Then we go to the ESD utility. We double check to see whether we have <coughs> the right COM port, okay? You go to the ESD exe and see uh, whether we have the round, right, uh, right COM port. Yeah, what happens now, this ESD utility is a different software which is provided by ZRA. So we simply interlink the interface, okay? So as you can see, it's now getting the status, okay, for us. If it connects to the server with ZRA, we'll be able to see all the parameters. As you can see, it has connected there. We have everything, the subnet, IP address, and our serial, forty serial or gadget number is there as well. So now in this case, let's check if we have some invoices to process there. If it has gotten the invoices, we come here under refresh. Okay, we have 29 invoices there remaining. So we can go ahead and start processing there, right? Yeah. So now, in this case, uh, we only need to double click here on the keys there for the CA Premier to be active. Okay. Then from there, we log in. After logging in, then we move on. We start processing, right? Yeah. So this thing, you just open there, but I'll show how to remove that macro, yeah, as we are going in inside there. So now here, uh, you are on the login page for CA Premier. So what you do is you simply come here, okay? Once it, once it finishes initializing, you simply select the login parameters which you want to use, okay? So now in this case, I'll select admin here, because I want to have everything there for me. So 2020, my password is there. Okay, then here, main, or you can use the service, whichever way, whichever one, uh, uh, whichever is appropriate for you. So enter there. Once you enter, you have everything there. Once it reaches 100%, then you will see a clock. If the clock is running, it means that all the codes are working. As you can see, the clock is running there, meaning all the codes are working. Now, the first thing which I need to do is to ensure that I have either the services or the product to process a tax invoice. You check here, okay? Create products codes here. As you can see, for the service, I have a flat lent for flat number 24, okay? I've already put the code there and assigned it to the service because this is a service, okay? Now, I want to just process a service alone because there are other clients who might want also to know how to process a product. So I've also assigned the product here for sugar here, okay? Sugar me represent all the products which can be sold throughout Zambia there. You can have carbonated drinks, you can have anything, timber, whatever, all those things, as long as there is VAT to be paid, okay? For services, it doesn't mean that it's just rent alone. It can be anything medical. For medical, I'm sure they don't pay VAT, but there are those other things like accounting services, those can be done. Yeah, everything, whatever it is, as long as there's VAT to be paid. So since everything is already there, let me check if I have the correct price to uh, start processing. As you can see, the rent of rate assigned the standard rate price A, or under class A, and the VAT inclusive in 24,000 is there as well, okay? And here, as you can see, it's ticked here, tax inclusive. 
Here you must always select the sales mode. Okay, yeah, sales mode there. Okay, and don't forget to put the date when you are processing. Uh, you, you have assigned the sell the price. Okay, so here you use these arrows to move to the next uh, product. So we'll do it like this. So now, as you can see, the sales mode is there. If it was a, for a privileged uh, customer, those who do not pay rent, I would have used the privileged mode. Export, if I was exporting anything, I would have used the export. Those who are in tourism, you use tourism. Insurance, you use in insurance. You use insurance mode. So now, if you check here again, <coughs> you find that there are so many taxi classes there. Class B for those who are selling carbonated soft drinks and the uh, cement, sugar, those are the people who are found there. B means there should be always a recommended price, okay, RRP. So the system compares the higher of RRP and the actual price. If the RRP is higher than the actual price, then VAT will be calculated from the inclusive of RRP. Wow. If the RRP is on the lower side, then VA to be charged at standard rate of 16% of the actual price. That's what happens. C1 means uh, exports. C2, privilege, those privilege persons, those people who do not pay tax. C3, these are for zero rated milk and others. D, those are exempt. Then T for tourism. Those who, tourism means those are tourism levy. For example, accommodation attracts tourism levy. So there will be 16% plus 1.5% tourism levy. Okay. For insurance means there is a 3% to be paid to ZRI, those who are in insurance. I think this is clear now. Yeah. So most of the business will be falling under a standard rate. So we close it here. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to check whether we have a customer to uh, process an invoice. So now, in this case, let's say we have XEML uh, Company uh, Limited, Company Limited, mm. XEML Zambia, Zambia Limited, eh? this is a company which we want to sell, yeah, or who is renting a property, and at the same time, they are also buying some uh, products from us. Where are they found? Let's say maybe copper belt, okay, all right, copper belt, right, then, all right, phone number, maybe they, they have a phone number like this, whatever phone number it is, yeah, email, XML um, at gmail.com. Okay. Then address box uh, 01GX. Yeah. Town Kitwe. All right. Yeah. Country Zambia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rico status corporate. Mm -hmm. Tipping, they must have a tipping like maybe something like this. We don't know. That's it, could be their tipping. Okay, then that's enough. So we can simply add. So we exit here. Now we are ready to process an invoice. <clears throat> for an invoice, for those who are in the properties, you don't necessarily, you don't need any product. It's a direct pro processing here. Okay, so in this case, you come under customer invoice here. Okay, yeah, then here you select the customer. You remember XML here, all right? Then document type, you see, an invoice or taxi invoice there, right? Then here, what we can do is we select sales mode, all right? Those who are not exporting anything. The warehouse here, which we used, okay. Many stores, no problem. Then here, okay. 
Okay, notes, we are not putting any notes. Okay, there's no credit note which we are passing, right? Then so payment mode, right? Now here, if these people are more likely to pay, to pay cash, credit card, check or electronic, then you should select any of these. Now rent normally, you find that these people will pay at the end of the month. They, they are more likely to transfer the money, so electronic. So now this, like we said, these are credit sales because they will pay after 30 days, okay? After 30 days invoice date, all right? Mm -hmm. So now here we tap, then you come here under product ID. This is where we are going to select our flat. Yeah. So the moment we select the flat, then the price of the flat or rent comes automatically. Now this this is just one flat, so you put one there. Okay, that's it. Tap, 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 tap. That's it. We are done. So you simply say okay. Yeah. Then save the data. Okay, save paper, uh, saves two purposes. One, it actually helps to run the double entry and save the data and prepare the data to be signed by the ESD. So here I'll say okay. Then you come here where it said. Uh, it says ESD invoice sign. Select the invoice. As you can see, see there are 14. One invoice for today for 14. You select it there. Then you come or you you click on Come Open, which is a serial port. As you can see, the port now is ready. It's selected, ready for action. So if I say okay, the port is now in action. So you wait a little bit. Within seconds, it will respond. As, it, as you can see, it has responded. It means that, it, as you can see, it says hit add button to clear the screen. Please note that the port has now closed. The reason why it has closed, it has already done its uh, job. It has uh, sent the invoice to ZRA server and save the data here for you to have the invoice printed. So I'll simply say, okay, and say, okay, let me print the invoice which I have, uh, which, was, which was sent to ZRI for signing or as a copy, all right? I need a copy also to give it to the customer. So I'll select the invoice here, okay? And the preview it first. If I want, I can print it directly here, but I want to preview it first and to see how it looks like. So that uh, those who are following us are able to see what kind of invoices we are talking about. So there it is. As, we, as you can see, it has the terminal invoice, terminal ID, ESD time when it was signed is 821, okay? Invoice code is also there. Invoice number is also there. Physical code is there. Now the currency convention is also there, okay? As you can see, ZMW, which is Zambian patch against one to one. If it was USD, you would have seen the exchange rate here as well. Now, as you can see now, remember I said, uh, this is, <coughs> you see, VAT inclusive. So it has calculated here the VAT inclusive from 24, it has put it there, then the total there. So my invoice is now ready to be given it to the customer. All right, so what I will do, I was, if I had a printer, I would simply say control P. When you say control P, you are simply saying you want this thing to be printed. As you can see, very soon you will see a print menu coming through here. Yeah? Anytime from now, there it is. It's coming through. If you are connected to the printer, you select the printer and print it. Now, since I'm not select, I'm not connected to the printer, I will simply cancel here. All right, and then move on. Then now, all what I'll do, I'll need the last thing is to have it posted so that it goes to the ledger. Okay, then I'll say post. You can see it's now posted. Okay, it has gone to the ledger. Okay, then close it here. So now what ledger is it going to? So <clears throat> I'll come here to the customer ledger. I want to see it. So uh, today 14, all right, to 14. All right, what customer is there? Okay. Mm. 
Okay, XML or Zambia Limited, right? Then here is the data's control. Okay, then enter there. Then it will pop up. Yeah, wait a little bit. There it is. My ledger looks like this. That is the 24,000 charged to XML. Okay, then now um, I have my invoice there, right? Okay, and everything is there, right? Okay, so what I need to do now, if I want to, okay, this is a statement which we can send to the customer at the end of the month. All right, then close it there, that's it, yeah. Mm. Then, what about if you are in, you are selling products? Yeah, for rent we are done, there is nothing to be done, in the ledger you have seen it already there, yeah, maybe, the sales day book okay fine you can see the sales day book now if you want the sales day book as well yeah all right so let's see how it looks like right no problem okay sales day book right uh -huh. so we do it like that let's see how it looks like <coughs> as you can see our sales day book here it is, you have the ZRI invoice. This comes from the ZRI server, okay? So we have their invoice there. Yeah, and also there are our net revenue, VAT, and the total. <clears throat> the 3,310, this is what you pay to ZRI at the end of the month. That's it, it's very straightforward. You don't have to calculate anything. You just print this report then Whatever total, that's what you pay there. Because we have all the invoices that have gone to ZRI there. Okay, listed there. Now, what if we wanted to reverse that invoice? We are with that invoice, we have processed it wrongly. Okay, no problem. You go back again to invoice processing. You come here now, you select the customer there, but now here you need to select the credit note because now you have to pass a credit note. Eh? Yeah, then now, under which category? Same sales mode. Okay under the same warehouse there, all right? Now here, you have to state the reason why you are passing the credit note. If you don't put the reason, then it won't be processed. So I would say wrongly, uh, wrongly, is it? Wrongly processed. <coughs> I'll simply say wrongly processed, okay? Yeah. Then now I'll say tab, okay? Then now you select that invoice, which is wrongly processed. If there are not many, you can easily select it from there. But if there are so many invoices, always use the serial number of the invoice. So the serial number was it. Either you select it here, or you look at the invoice print out. You will see the serial number for, for example, the serial number was one, which is also reflecting here as one. So you just type in one there and the tab. As you can see, it picks automatically and brings it there, okay? So here, I had the used electronic mode, okay? Then here, it was a credit sale. So here, I'll come here now and select uh, the flat. Then, now, see what is going to happen here. If I say this, it tells me to say, please note this is a credit note. Uh, you are creating, then the quantity must be in negative. It warns me. So the quantity must be in negative. Now there are sometimes you might be on the phone. You might not even read that. What happens? Okay. Yeah. Now you have now the preventer. This will never, never allow you to proceed until you follow the requirement. Have you seen what he's saying? Clear wrong data capturing. Please note, you can see it even puts a warning there, a banner if you want. Yeah, there is a banner there in front of you. Please note that the quantity must not be zero. Enter the quantities, uh, quantities or quantity now. Okay, so now at least you are owned. If you continue doing that, again, if I do that, it will keep on warning me and it will never move. So I'll go back here and you obey the instructions and put it minus one, okay? There it tells me that which is a friendly message 
Okay, I'll say okay. As you can see now, it allows me to go ahead. Then I'll, here I'll simply say okay. Okay, now here there is a ban again to say severe warning now. Please save your data now, otherwise the double entry will not run. You see? So I want my double entry to run. I will save my data, as simple as that. Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> I'm saving my data there and my double entry has now completed running. Now it tells me to say, please hit the, com op hit the open com button to send the data to ESD gadget. I will say, okay, fine. First I will select the invoice which is the number two, then come open there as per instruction. Then here I'll simply say, okay, and wait a little bit to see what happens from there. Yeah, after waiting a little bit, it should do pop up some message because the gadget would have finished its job. As you can see, it has finished there. I'll simply say, okay, and see now my credit note, how it looks like, okay? These things are very straightforward. You don't have to worry for anything. So now I'll simply say, okay, there, and preview my credit note, right? <clears throat> Let's see, it's the credit note should be in minus now, okay? If it's not in minus, then, then we have some, done something incorrect. As you can see, yeah, when you come down here, you see, it's my everything is in minus. So we have reversed that one, okay? And on top there, it's writing what? credit note okay so now it has also referenced the invoice which we are reversing you see here okay so now we are done right then the only thing which we need to do is to post the invoice the invoice the credit note post it there that's it is posted all right <coughs> then close it here we have done everything so if you go to the ledger there the ledger should be showing in and out we have reversed the invoice, yeah? So now we do it like this, okay? Select the customer, right? Then here we say data control account and, and let's see if it's reversed there. Hmm. That's it, these are simple things. My advice to you, this thing can be uh, delegated to receptionist, to save your time because there is literally you don't need an accountant to do all this you can see it's zero what what is so difficult to do all this thing there's nothing completely nothing and remember ca premier does not malfunction it's impossible as long as your gadget is green the buttons are green there is nothing like it to fail to work even if there is a power failure as long as you have a laptop you can still use it there's nothing wrong here. Okay, now let me check my sales day book to confirm that it's also zero. Okay, because these are the things, the sales day book, that's the one which you use to uh, account for VAT that you are supposed to pay to ZRA. Okay, yeah, so it's supposed to be showing zero by now. Okay, unless otherwise. There we are. As you can see, it's zero, zero. There is nothing, nothing, everything is reversed. So you close, you move on, okay? Now, for those who are in property renting or other services, we are done. What about those who are selling products like uh, sugar, like the one which we created? Let's say the same person, we are, we are also selling the product ourselves. What happens from there? You create an invoice again. <clears throat> Mm. Let's assume that this person is the same person who is also, apart from renting, is also buying uh, products from us, products. So you say, you select the invoice there, then here, uh, what do you do? Sales mode again, all right. Now, the warehouse here, which is many stores, okay. They are tap, 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 okay. Payment mode, again, maybe this one will be, if it's for cash, it's for cash, you select the cash. Again, this uh, site maybe this time around you want to pay cash, okay? No problem. So it's a castle. So now here, what is he buying? 50 kg of sugar, okay? How many are they? One, one bag, okay? As you can see, people there, it has 
brought us the actual price which is 84 and the RRP is higher than uh, 84 meaning our V8 is going to be based from um, from the RRP that's what is going to happen no matter what it's important that people you understand these things properly okay so that you move on in business okay so now all oh, what i'll do now i'll say tab 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 everything is okay for me okay then now save my data so that the double entry runs for me okay yeah once the, the double entry finishes running i'll have the invoice done okay so i'll say okay so um i'll come here and select the invoice number three to be signed open comport there and do this okay now wait a little bit here and see what happens here okay it closes now so now let me see how my invoice looks like right all right uh -huh. okay so it was invoice number three and you see how it looks like now uh -huh. okay. so now we want to see what he, this is okay so okay just a little bit there and you see what has happened here now if you check here like i explained here the rp, RP is only is higher than the actual price so meaning our vat will be based on rrp not the other way around if this one was higher than that, it was going to be 16% of uh, that. But in this case, we have, if you calculate what is the inclusive of 16% from 120, you get 16.55 there. That's what is going to be picked here as the invoice. Okay, so that is what is there now. Mm -hmm. There we are. All right. Yeah. So that's the way how it works. Mm -hmm. So now we are done with this, right? Okay. Then mm, we can post our invoice here. No problem. All right. Post our invoice posted. That's it. Okay. So if you want to look at the ledger again for this guy, now we should find it. Um, 84,000 there, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. There. Okay. Let's see what happens from our region. Okay. As you can see, this guy now owes how much? 84 quach. Okay. That's it. So, we are done everything is okay now yeah mm. i don't think that there is anything to be done now yeah we have done everything we have covered so many things using the gadget so from here we need to, to move on to some other areas uh, and see how best things can be done right Okay, then uh, the other things, people, you should always remember that when you are dealing with the products, you always uh, make sure that the stock is there. Yeah, as you can see here, yeah, here you can see 16.55 uh, is showing as a liability. This is what we need to pay to ZRI from that cell. So everything is okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. This video was created and uh, distributed by Nectar Prime uh, partner, Christopher Ankwembo, fellow chartered certified accountant, fellow member of Zambia Institute of